In this tutorial, I'm going to be taking a closer look at Image Trace in the new version of Illustrator, which as of this video is 27.6.1, but I know we have another update coming soon, 27.7, I believe. So this may apply to that as well. Adobe has updated the Image Trace panel. Let's take a look at it. If I just take this little drawing that I have selected right here, and I click on image trace and then I open the panel. We'll see this is a new redesigned panel with these icons here for the different presets. And I'm hearing that a lot of people are getting unexpected results when using this. And since I've been playing around with it, I'm, I'm finding the same thing that other people are finding, but I do have a few workarounds so that you can get it to work and get the good results you're accustomed to. Here, I have a drawing made in Adobe Fresco. I did this with a pixel brush and it's got some roughness to it. Um, and I do this very often where I want semi rough drawing that I can make look like an ink drawing by vectorizing it in Illustrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this off to the side here and let's run image trace on it. So I'll click on the image trace button and then open up the panel. And we can see here that um, even though Illustrator is using auto detect to sort of look at your image and pick the appropriate preset, it's just not working here. We're getting a full tone color preset. And right now it says six colors. In the past when I've done this, I've actually gotten um, a black and white looking result that said that it had a couple thousand colors here. So that was really strange to me. Um, but anyway, we need to instead move this over to a black and white drawing here. And so right away, we're getting something a little bit better. Um, we've got two colors now, black and white. Another thing that you're going to want to do is choose to ignore color. This used to be called ignore white, but now you can eyedropper and choose any color to ignore. So that's great. But you're not going to be able to turn this on um, right here. And that may have you wondering why. Now there's a tool tip that if you hover here, it will come up and it'll tell you available when the tracing method is set to cut out. So you can come into the advanced area here and down here to the, the tracing method. So typically this was chosen for us, this first one here, abutting, but now we have overlapping chosen for us. So let's go ahead and click on abutting and that's gonna make it possible for us to use this ignore color button and that removes the background. So this is actually not a bad result, but generally I like to get a little bit more detail out of the texture of the line here. And so another thing that you'll see when you do just sort of a standard tracing now in image trace, um, most of the time I've seen it, the noise is set to 50 pixels, which is pretty high. And this is why people are getting these very sort of weird somewhat blurry results that ignore parts of your artwork. That's all because of this noise setting being up at 50 pixels. Rather, we want it lower so that we can pick up more detail here. These other sliders here, paths and corners, um, you can adjust these upwards to get a little bit more detail as well. How much you know you do this is, is totally up to you. This gets a lot rougher when I get up to 92%, but we also have more anchor points. And you'll see, I'm gonna have to move my video a little bit to show you this, because this panel, this image trace panel, the new redesigned panel is so long that it spans my whole screen and it's not the same aspect ratio as my video. So what we could really use here is a nice scroll bar to make this easier to use. Otherwise we have to come in and just constantly <laughs> work with these little arrows here because down at the bottom here, this area of the panel info is so important to us. We need to know what our resulting artwork is gonna look like in terms of the number of anchor points. It can be kind of complex. Uh, 1365 is not terrible, but if you're somebody who uses this artwork in repeat patterns, you definitely wanna keep this number as low as possible because you'll experience a lot of slowing, especially if you're using pattern editing mode in Illustrator. So always keep an eye on that number. 
I'm going back to the sliders here. So I'm just gonna leave it at 92, just because for this, I really like that little bit of roughness. You can play with the corner slider to get the result you want. Sometimes higher corners can give you fewer anchor points or more anchor points. It's really just up to the art. But as long as we turn the noise down, we're gonna see um, better results. Also, I'm gonna turn on Simplify. So now this is a new feature here, and I really like this. So. Simplify is something that you normally do by going up to the object menu and choosing Simplify. Um, but now we have a version of it here inside of Image Tray. So we can see if we can shave off some anchor points here. And if I look down here with Simplify turned on at 90%, I'm getting 532 anchor points. So that's really shaving off a lot. It is taking away some of the nice roughness. So I'm just going to move this up to 95. And I think I'm reaching a nice little happy medium there where I'm getting um, lower number of anchor points and still some of that roughness that I wanted there. All right, so now that I've made these adjustments, I'm getting a result that I really like. And what you can do is come over here and save this as a new preset so that you don't have to go through these steps every single time that you're working with, you know, one of your black and white drawings that you do in fresco or with this particular brush or pen. So let's save this as a new preset by clicking here. And then I'm gonna call this fresco noise brush. That's what I used and click OK. Now this appears in your menu here at the bottom right there below all these hot air balloons. Okay, and now finally, when we're ready to use this, we're just gonna go ahead and click on the expand button, which is also at the very bottom of the very, very long panel, but I'm gonna click on it up here. And now we have our vector result. Now here's another example of a tracing that I did recently. This is one of my Adobe Firefly uh, results here. And if I zoom in, you'll see this is a tracing that I did in the previous version, 27.5. And I'm just saying what the sliders are set to here. Mine were set to 50, 50, 15, and cut out. And so this is the result that I got before. Uh, when I come over here and show you what image trace did, um, I got, you know, some missing artwork here and it's just not as crisp. And that's because these were set to 50, 50, 50 and overlap. And so again, these are the settings for the advanced sliders. So let me just come over here and I'll click on the image trace button and let's see what we get. So we've got 50, 50 and 50. Again, the noise is gonna to be too high to capture enough detail here. So I'm gonna turn this down to, I think where I had it before it was 15. And immediately we're getting a better result. Let's go into the color settings here and Illustrator has chosen full tone color. And for this image, I'm gonna do better by using a limited color tracing. This is just something I like to apply for artwork like this. And then I can, Drag the slider down to get fewer colors. And now I have a tracing that is comparable to what I was getting before Illustrator updated image trace. Now, one last thing, we used to see that the tracing method here was automatically set to a budding. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to a budding. And that's just gonna help me if I want to sort of take this apart and have little cutout uh, birds and things like that, it's gonna be a little easier to do when the paths are abutting rather than overlapping. And then when I'm ready, I can go up to the top control bar and click expand. And Illustrator's added a new button here, revert to original if you wanna go back to the image. So that's also a helpful improvement. So some things that are not great about this new panel and some things that are working well for us. It just wanted to give you a tour of all of those things and I hope that it helps you when you're using Image Trace in Illustrator 27. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and on my website, lauracoylecreative.com. If this video was helpful, give me a like and a comment. Let me know what you think of the new Image Trace and thank you so much for watching.